I'm Robert Adams, and this is Final Boss. This week, Curry gives us five cheap games for Halloween, Justin guides us through Haunted Lavender Town, someone got flashed on Twitch, and our staff faces off in sudden death. Get ready, Boss Incoming! What is Final Boss? Final Boss is the product of three great friends, a show by gamers for gamers. Here you'll find all the best in gaming entertainment and talk. We've got reviews, roundtables, previews, let's plays, walkthroughs, all the best in gaming content to keep you coming back for more. So get ready, Boss Incoming. I'm Robert Adams. And I'm Brandon Dixon. And this is your Gaming News. Ebola is out and about, and a game has benefited from the mass hysteria emphasized by the media. Plague Incorporated is a game that has the player create a virus designed to spread around the world with the purpose of killing humanity. With the recent cases of Ebola becoming prominent in the United States, the game has seen a recent spike in downloads. The game was created by James Vaughn, and his intention for the game was to create awareness of the deadly diseases around the world. And his recent goal is to be able to work with charities to continue to make people aware and inform them about what Ebola is. Even though one does not have to pay for Plague Incorporated, Vaughn has seen a 50% increase in his game's downloads. I can really appreciate what's trying to be done. Ebola is scaring a lot of people, and the news is not making things any better. But Plague Incorporated is giving the opportunity to learn, and that is commendable. Also in gaming news, for those of you who don't know Twitch guidelines, it prohibits the streaming of In the Nude. And for those of you who weren't clear on what that meant, they decided to clarify for you. A recent addition has been included into the Sexual Misconduct and Behavior Code saying that users are not allowed to stream while wearing lingerie, swimsuits, undergarments, or pasties. Those also went on to include that there will be no fully nude torsos as well. I agree with this guideline, but what Twitch basically just told me is a few million people got trolled by half-naked fat men playing games. I'm Robert Adams. And I'm Brandon Dixon. And that was your gaming news. Hello, I'm Eric Thomas, director of the Star Theater here at Moorhead State University, and I'd like to invite you to come out and join us for some of the great programs we offer in the Star Theater. Our programs are both educational with planetarium programs and entertaining with laser shows that feature artists such as Elton John all the way out to Metallica. So come join us at the Star Theater located in the Space Science Center here on the campus of Moorhead State University. And if you've got questions, go online to moorheadstate.edu slash star theater. Welcome back to Final Boss. My name is Curry Hartson. Halloween is right around the corner, and if you don't plan to help your kids go trick-or-treating and don't plan to go to a party, then the only logical thing for you to do is to play video games. And if you're like me and cheap, you don't want to shell out $60 for every game you buy this holiday. To mix the two together, 
Here are five great games you can play alone or play with your other poor friends while you celebrate Halloween. The first, while it may not be Halloween themed, Ghouls and Goblins concept comes out with Orcs Must Die 2. For only $15, Orcs Must Die 2 is one of the most addicting tower defense games out there. Whether you're playing alone or playing with a buddy, you will carve your way through an army of orcs as you progress through the tower defense madness with floor spikes, acid shooters, arrow traps, archers, grinders, and more that will go over the top and make killing orcs the most fun you can have for $15. Also lightning. Lots of lightning. Plants vs. Zombies. For the kids, right? For only $5, this masterpiece can be yours. What may look very boring and unappealing to some at first actually becomes extremely enjoyable and worth every penny. Judging a book by its cover is bad, Billy, and this fantastic game is one strategy game that will not only hardcore gamers enjoy, but it's family friendly for your children to play too. Also, if you have a functioning device in today's world, it can play Plants vs. Zombies, let's be honest. Alan Wake. A little on the pricier side, but for $30 on Steam, you can have the awesome survival horror game Alan Wake. A great narrative and an awesome concept, Alan Wake is a writer who gets written into his own story where he must survive the darkness. While there are scarier games out there, Alan Wake is a great creepy feeling game to satisfy that side of the Halloween vibe for you. Also, the game has some of the best lip sync ever created. Of course, Mr. Wake. He must have gone to visit the restroom. He'll be back in a moment. Yeah, that's good. The Walking Dead Season 1. Everyone loves the TV show, but what about the game? For $25, you can have Telltale's epic first season of their interactive narrative game that really is quite the touching story between Lee and Clementine. Cell shaded graphics and a zombies theme for Halloween, The Walking Dead brings TV enthusiasts and gamers alike into a game all about the choices they make and a story they will care about. The best single player story experience you can have for your Halloween. A no list about games for Halloween would be complete without Left 4 Dead 2. Left 4 Dead 2 is the pinnacle of multiplayer zombie games in my opinion and no Halloween game session with friends is complete without it. Only $20 on Steam and in any bargain there in America, Left 4 Dead 2 is the multiplayer game you need to do your Halloween correctly. Machine guns, hunters, and zombies galore, Left 4 Dead 2 is where it's at for your Halloween game. Also, who doesn't love running through a crowd of zombies with an axe? Just help for your game session. Take these games into consideration and save some money this solidate. Stay tuned for more Final Boss here on Channel 85, Morehead State TV. Yo, why are you looking at bags, bro? What you need is a chick magnet. You put me in the room and boom, chicks. That's what I'm talking about. Hey everybody, welcome back to Final Boss. Uh, so, th this week is Halloween, and while we don't get to actually air on the 31st, which is just just a sad, sad day. Depressing. Uh, totally awful. Um, it, that still doesn't doesn't mean we're not celebrating the holiday. And uh, While we were in the ready room, before we started taping, we were kind of talking about scary things that have happened in games and just creepy stuff that happens when, when, you, when you play at midnight. Uh, it sounds cheesy, but I mean, I can think of plenty of times that 
that I, I sat and watched something or sat and played through a game that I was just like, are you, are you serious? This oh, is my God. Nothing, nothing good happened. I, I still maintain that I threw my controller the first time I got my head cut off in Resident Evil 4. That was, I didn't see that coming. I was like, what? It was, it was, it was awful. Oh, my and God. Like, you know, playing Resident Evil and seeing that zombie just turn around to face you the first time, you're just like, like cringing in terror like, uh, I don't, I don't know, about, I don't know about that, but it was creepy. It was creepy. Now Brandon had an interesting, interesting story that yeah. he was telling us in that. Oh video. yeah. Uh, what was, what was that? Well, you know, it was a Saturday night about 1 a.m. playing Skyrim. Your first mistake. So much fun, and it was one of those quests where you got to go around and uh, kill a bunch of spiders. Right. And I'm not too keen on spiders, so because mm -hmm. they like to sneak around and bite you and slowly kill you. Well. Yeah. I finally clear out the cave did. after eradicating spiders, mm -hmm. and unbeknownst to me, I escape the cave, and in my basement, a small spider, minding its own business, slowly creeps down in front of my face. I flip like crazy. I fling the controller, I smash the spider, and I'm like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> no more Skyrim for that night, you just went to bed. Just, I was like, oh, no, forget it. Oh, um, man. I was like, oh, wow, you're a big wuss. You really got scared of a tiny spider? I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Could have been deadly for all you know. Hey. And, then, and then there are bunches of other games that that you know that I played that I was like, I don't, I don't know about this. Um, Dark, uh, yeah, Dark Souls. Well, Dark Souls isn't that scary, but well, what's about the other, recent games? Please, the only out. terrifying thing that I've so far seen about Dark Souls is the difficulty. The difficulty <laughs> is awful. It is awful. <laughs> That's more scary than the no. Uh, Dead Space. De Dead Space is actually kind of a scary game. Yeah. Um, I had a, I had a moment where I creeped myself out with Fallout one night. Yeah. Um, Let me guess, the Dunwich building. I'm curious, uh, what creature or enemy in Fallout throughout the night do you hate encountering the most? Uh, I don't know. I can't, the I, glowing one. I kind of just scares I, I, me. I kind of just, I carry a big gun. I mean, it, it, oh, hey, look. After uh, a while, I mean, it's like, just. I mean, you ever got that jump scare where one just like snakes out behind you? Yeah, I've had, I've had that before. Um, the thing that creeped me out the most, I was talking to my, uh, to my brother about, about something, and I opened up this drawer that had a severed foot in it. <laughs> As it turns out, there's not a severed foot in the in the game files. So I was like, "Who did I waste that 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 whose whose foot ended up down here?" <laughs> right. It turns out that uh, some outcast brotherhood guy that I'd shot up above his his foot had gone through the through the ground and ended up in this. Just to it ended man. up in this like like drawer, and I'm like, well, "That's that's macabre." <laughs> it's like I can't that's, sell this. <laughs> that's, 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 this is not working for me right now. Um, the game just wanted to scare you, and it didn't get satisfaction. No, it didn't. There, there are a lot of disappointments uh, in, in scary games, too. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at you, Resident Evil 6. <laughs> it, was, it was like something out of a cheesy action movie, not, not, not necessarily the scary game that, that it was supposed to be. Like, they file it under horror, but nothing, nothing that Well, they're changing the definition of horror a bit, but now it's been you know, re-changed back to, I'm scared out of my mind. For example, uh, Alien Isolation, an enemy you cannot kill. Yeah, I did or recently Slender. watch. I did mm -hmm. watch gameplay. Of you can only run away from the enemy. I've found one game that actually like mixes the elements of like Resident Evil and those games, uh, The Evil Within. Mm -hmm. You can't kill some of the enemies, but the other ones you can just blow their head off. Mm -hmm. But it's like zombies, and you know, things will like crawl out of nowhere. It's like warping reality. It's literally one of the things that's about the game. It warps reality. Mm -hmm. That's all the time we have for this segment. We'll be right back with Justin's Haunted Lavender Town. It's going to get spooky in here right, uh, right when we get back here on uh, Final Boss, Channel 85, MSU TV. My name is Scotty Purnell. I've been here nine years. We take the trash out of the buildings and put it in the garbage truck. In there, the chute is way up high on the wall where the trash comes out into the buggy. And you have to take a big iron hook reach up, hook the trash, and it's falling down towards you. It's not a boring job. It's, a, you know, you can get out and talk. We're always finding something <laughs> very interesting. I mean, you never know what you're going to find in the trash. I like my job very much. And print. Oh, yeah.
Hello everyone, and welcome to A Haunting in Lavender Town. The world of Pokemon, where not everything is as it seems. Lavender Town, the noble purple city. But when you enter the Pokemon Center, Nurse Joy says she can't wait to see you again. Too bad, she won't. Our story takes place at Lavender Tower, where our hero Red is going to investigate some of these mysterious hauntings happening at Pokemon Tower. After entering the tower, he notices some faint screams in the background. Help me, please help. Our hero goes up to the second floor where he runs into his rival. His rival is angry. He just wants to take retribution for what he caused him. You don't remember our battle on the Saint Anne? Pidgeotto was attacking my Raticate. Do you not remember making my Raticate faint? Well, because of you, my Raticate is dead and he cannot be replaced. You are gonna pay for what you've done. Blue, I'm sorry. Get out! Leave! No! Our young rival Blue does not stay around. He is going to smell you later, as he can't deal with a potential another loss. Our young hero also leaves, trying to regroup. He has to have a plan. He can't let this ghost run off everyone, and he must save everyone. Suddenly a wild ghastly appears. What part of get out do you not understand? This is our tower. You filthy humans have done nothing. Remember that team rocket? They've caused all this and we are not taking it anymore. Get out! Red leaves, hoping to trick Ghastly. He knows that if he can get by, he can do what he's needed. Hopefully, he doesn't run into Ghastly again. After entering the third floor, Red sees some women in the distance. Could these be the women that have gone missing? Be gone, evil spirits. You must leave this place. Red feels as he's been hit by a confused ray. He doesn't know what is going on. Red makes it to the fourth floor. After entering the floor, he sees more older ladies. Are they possessed as well? Red sees another woman. Hopefully, she's not possessed either. Another lady says, You shall join us. But Red won't. Or will he? Give me your soul, she screams. Give me your soul. Give me your blood. Your blood. Zombies! And then the ghost appears to him. I told you to get out. Now you will never leave us. You will be stuck in this tower forever. Blood. Blood. They never found the body of our young hero Red. Just his blood all over the floor. They never found the old women. Are they happy? Did they get enough souls? This has been Justin Poon. Stay tuned for more on Final Boss.
Hey guys, um, we're playing uh, we're playing Super Smash Brothers this uh, week again for sudden death because if it ain't dead, don't kill it. That's <laughs> how that saying goes. You can't, that, that is you exactly can't kill what works. Exactly. Um, anyway, um, I am going to be playing as Bowser. Justin, why don't you uh, tell Ooh. us who you're going to be playing? Team Charizard all the way. Team Blastoise. Who are you going to be playing? I'm playing as, as Monkey D. Luffy. <laughs> King of the Pirates and Master Soul Reaper. Oh, you. <laughs> In other words, he's playing as a Mii Fighter. Anyway, I'm playing as Naruto. Without further ado, let's all do an Omega stage on random. Let's see what we get. We'll get Omega stage that's not in this game. All right. You know, yeah. Okay. Somebody's not going to pick an Omega stage, and they're going to ruin this for everyone. I feel like it's going to be you. It probably was. You're a terrible person for doing How dare you. for doing those terrible things to us. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> JK. Oh no. What did I even press the button? It. Ha. Yeah, how's Team Charizard working out for you? That's what you get for not having Blastoise and Smash. <laughs> like it's his fault. It is his fault. He voted for Team Charizard instead of picking the one that was true. I don't know. Hope you like Suicune. Eh, it's okay. Oh, there I go. I mean, I it like didn't affect explosions. me one. It didn't affect me one bit, but that did though. Bowser, you can hit me all you want, but you can't defeat my Hokage spirit. <laughs> You're silly. I am. I also set this Mii Fighter to be incredibly fast. He has no speed or defense, so I run off the stage a lot. I thought you said he had no speed. Yeah. Did I just say that? I mean, it's attacking. You're, you're just too focused. I'm in the zone right now. That's a nice spot on your head, Tim. I'm in the Obama Snow Zone. I think that's what Pokemon that is. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice. Evasion. At the perfect time. I've gotten fairly, believe it or not, prior to like, um, getting Smash 4, like I've actually never really used Evasion. Which... Yeah, I feel like I use it a lot more now. It makes it, I don't know, it's like a key like technique to do in this game. I know, I, I hit myself. Oh, you and your... I don't even know what to say. Ground pound. I believe this will feel like it's a pretty even game. It's a very short game. Yeah. yeah. At least I'm trash talking so much. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful, but you got the... You got the KO for that, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, oh Believe it! Naruto won! Well, that was an upset. I knew it would work. Hey, we would have... I was a losing. Yo, Justin, <laughs> don't even, don't even miss I'm your gonna negative three. I'm going to be the king three. of the Smash Brothers. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. Brandon Turner finally, after what, like six or seven matches, won. Uh, that right. was rude. Anyway, that's all we've got for now. You're in Final Boss. Yeah, see ya. That's all for this week on Final Boss. 
Tune in next week for even more gaming awesomeness. There's a lot of great stuff in our show this week. Justin took us through Haunted Lavender Town. Curry pointed out five easy to get games for Halloween. We talked about our experiences with scary games and things that weren't so scary in games. And somehow people just can't do the right thing on Twitch. Thanks, Robert, for uh, bringing that up for us. If you'd like more Final Boss, go to facebook.com slash decutorgaming, decutorgaming.com, or tweet at the Mini Ninja and we can get you on the show, or you can just get more of our awesome stuff to watch. For everyone here at our NMSU TV, our crew, and our executive producer, Tim Creekmore, I'm John Dunaway. You've been watching Final Boss. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.